Hello again, and welcome back to my 2012 Halloween watch list. It is getting so close now that it, things are getting very hectic in the scheduling of this, and I'm getting really excited about Halloween. But right here, the day before, the big thing, what I wanted to do, is there was two different movies that came out that kind of had a semblance of relation between them. And I was kind of excited about both of them because they were both uh, movies that I hadn't seen on Blu-ray and ones that I hadn't seen in just quite a while in general. First one I watched was Rocky Horror Picture Show on Blu-ray. This is the Digi book, which includes the U.S. version and the U.K. version. For you guys that maybe don't know about this, I, I don't really want to get into it a whole lot because it's very difficult to explain to somebody that hasn't seen it. At least it's difficult to explain in a way that would make it seem like it would be really interesting. But for me, I think it's great. It's very catchy tunes. It's weird costumes. It's bizarre ideas. It's lots of interesting characters. It's great atmosphere. It's kind of fun for Halloween, but it doesn't necessarily feel like a Halloween movie unless you're somebody that really is a fan. To a non-fan, it wouldn't probably feel like a Halloween movie. The big thing on this is you're going to get fans and detractors alike. I would say go into this open-minded and just let yourself enjoy the movie. There's always going to be reasons why people won't like this, and I won't get into all of it, but you could probably imagine. I don't even think there's very many people that haven't seen it that also don't have an idea of what it's about. I originally watched this in the 80s, but this is one of those movies that was in the movie theaters forever. Um, in fact, it was in the movie theaters. This movie came out in 1975. And about 1987, 1988 was the first time I saw it. And at that time, I rented it. My cousins and I watched it. But there was a theatrical showing of it still every Saturday, Friday? Friday or Saturday, maybe both, at midnight. Not very far from where I live, like 20 miles or something like that. And at that time, I didn't understand why. And I didn't find out till later how big of a cult following this movie has. This is kind of one of those quintessential cult movies. This is one of those things that doesn't get mainstream attention, and yet it has a large fan base. Well, this is a cult movie to the point where the fan base has become you know, mainstream now. There's just so many people that enjoy this that this movie isn't even considered a small, non-populist type movie. This movie is a movie that everybody's heard of. It's not like Troll 2 where you know your grandmother's like, what are you talking about? People know about Rocky Horror Picture Show, even if they don't like it, even if they haven't seen it, they, they know of it. I saw this year that Jib Jab was doing a Rocky Horror Picture Show thing where you could fill in for the major characters. Um, I think everybody probably has favorite characters in this, and before I even get that question, I guess I can tell you who my favorite character is, Magenta. I've always liked Magenta, which is odd because I'm a big fan of Bride of Frankenstein, and it's not because of that reason. You would think it is, but it's not. But I really like Magenta in her first outfit and the way she looks at the beginning of the movie all the way up to the end. And then at the end when she has the hair like the bride, uh, I guess that doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've always been a Magenta fan. I don't know why. There's something weird about the way her makeup is really dark around her eyes. And she always has just a big, like, kind of sinister grin, kind of a big laugh in weird parts. Her hair is kind of strange, too. It's big, but it's flat on top. It's, like, just parted in the middle. And it's just become kind of an iconic image. I, and I don't even think it's as big of a strange outfit as maybe what Columbia would have or definitely not what Frankfurter or you know somebody like that it's not as strange of an outfit but yet it's iconic but I think all these characters are iconic in their own way we'll get into the main part of it of course Tim Curry's in this then of course you get Susan Sarandon Susan Sarandon plays Janet which is a very normal part same goes with Barry Bostwick. He plays Brad. Brad and Janet are kind of like the little stiffs, the squares, and they get introduced to this crazy place where, you know, everything is going on. This really nuts. It's like murder, and it's like overt sexuality, 
and it has to do with science fiction and just all kinds of weird stuff. I can't say too much without giving away kind of what it's about, although I don't know if it's that important that you <laughs> can figure out the twist or not. I, I don't know. I think it's just enjoyable if you know how it ends or if you don't, because it's not about getting to a twist ending. But one of the reasons I was such a big fan of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is that Halloween party scene I'd mentioned. And it was really cool that Scott Taylor Compton and all the other main actresses had dressed up like the characters from Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I was very impressed by how accurate their costumes looked. And that made me more of a fan of the way Rob Zombie had done that because he did spend a significant amount of time making sure that they looked exactly like the characters of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I thought that was very cool. It made me a bigger fan of Scout Taylor Compton for sure. Now, if you guys haven't seen this, it is very interesting. It is a musical. <laughs> it is slightly a throwback to early sci-fi and horror, but with a very 70s, I would say. It has homosexual overtones, of course. The, you've always heard that, and it, it does, but it's, it's not like something where it should be pushing how people feel about things. Uh, I, I don't get how people hate on it just one way or another because of stuff like that. But... It also is sort of like a 70s space opera. <laughs> I don't know. It's very interesting, and like I say, it is one of those pure D cult movies. I actually got a chance to see this live. The girl I was dating at the time, about 12 years ago, she got tickets to go see a live performance of it. And we went, it was blast. They gave out kits and they've got all these things where different parts of the um, the show, of course, you throw things and stuff like that. And of course, they didn't want you to throw certain things, so they would give you the kit itself. And the kit itself was very skilled back, although they did give us a lighter because there's a part where you light your lighter. That, to me, seemed a little iffy because I'm like, I think that's more dangerous than throwing like a hot dog weenie at the, <laughs> whatever, you know. It was a fun, fun time. I saw that, and then another time I saw a live performance that's in front of the movie showing. That used to be a big thing, too, as you would go to a place that was screening the movie, like a movie theater, but it would have a stage in front of it like many theaters and stages kind of share together anyway, and you would have a live performance in front of that, which is always kind of interesting. So I'll go ahead and leave it at that. You guys definitely check it out if you want to. If you don't, you don't. And much like the theme of what that movie says at the beginning was the science fiction double feature, that is the kind of the opening theme of Rocky Horror Picture Show, if you were unaware. I wanted to do this as a double feature, and that's kind of how I intended it all along. I was waiting for this movie to come in, and then I was going to save it for, you know, kind of a special time. And I wanted to see another Blu-ray digibook, something I haven't seen in high definition. This one actually has a restored ending that was about 20 minutes, I think, that was cut out of the original movie and changed because they wanted to give it a very Hollywood ending. This one is kind of a sci-fi horror movie also, and it also is a musical. So if you guys don't like musicals, this is not going to be for you. You know, whatever. Maybe tomorrow. What we're going to be talking about is Little Shop of Horrors. So... This is such a fun movie. I actually th saw this at the theaters in uh, 1986 when it very first came out. I actually saw this with the same cousins that I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show with on VHS way back in the day. This is such a fun one. This has a humongous comedic cast, um, including people like Rick Moranis, of course. But it has Steve Martin, and has Bill Murray, and has John Candy. It has all these great actors in it, and you guys probably know the gist of this. There's probably not a lot of people out there that haven't seen Little Shop of Horrors. It's basically about this guy that works at this plant store. And the girl that he, of his dreams is working there as well. None, none of them really have any money. The store itself isn't doing very well. And he mysteriously comes across this plant that he names Audrey 2. Of course, Audrey 1 is the girl of his dreams that he works with. And Audrey 2 is this odd little plant that just kind of a, appears out of nowhere in a beam of light. During an eclipse, which they kind of just... 
all say, okay, that was weird, and they just move on. <laughs> they don't really question it. But it's very strange because all of a sudden business picks up. Everybody is very curious about this very odd little plant, which starts off much smaller than this. It sits in a little bitty coffee can, and it continues to grow. I'll say that it grows um, after being fed. And I'll leave this all to your imagination, but this is very dark. Regardless of how many comedic actors are in this, the uh, the dark undertones in this are very bleak. It's just that everybody has a smile and there's a very catchy, vibrant tune playing in the background. If you think about it, without all that music, this would be pretty horrific. People do die in this. The main characters are even likable. They are not necessarily the white hats. There's a lot of gray in this movie if you kind of dissect it. But the interesting thing about this is that you need to see it the original way so you can really appreciate this director's cut. The original version, of course, had a very Hollywood ending. But before then, the director of this, Frank Oz, had intended for it to have the original ending, which is much darker. I would say it's an ending that leaves it wide open for sequels, but at the same time, it's a bleak ending. So if you see this and you see that ending, that's not the way it was. What makes that interesting is getting to see it for the first time after many, many years, you know, hidden away. There was um, a little bit of it on a previous DVD, but it was not restored into the movie, and it was not as didn't look as good as it does on this. But yes, definitely check out if you've never seen it. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Magenta, my favorite character <laughs> from Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> I'll put a picture of her right here. In fact, I'll put a picture of Scout Taylor Compton and Magenta here. And you can see both. It is just uncanny. I still can't get that out of my head. It makes me want to watch Halloween 2 again just to see how good that costume is that she has. And today for the bonus section, nothing too special. I'm just going to show you for a minute here what I ended up getting. I thought these were uh, pretty good. I think it's a perfect snack for like a double feature like this because this is something that definitely takes you back to good old days of theater experience is what it reminds me of. Even if I didn't get to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show at the theater originally, I did see it later. And it, it's a very group participant type of movie as far as everybody is yelling and laughing and lots of people dress up. It's, it's one of those things that if you're like a sci-fi type person you kind of reserve that for the grand opening of your favorite movie. Well, the Rocky Horror Picture Show is like that every night that it's uh, showing at the theater. So it's kind of interesting. I will go ahead and switch you guys over to a very brief, special little bonus section, and then we'll be moving on and getting ready for October 31st. All right. Awesome. Cat loves popcorn, don't you? Don't you? I have no idea why he does.
Movie Theater Butter Popcorn Pop-Up Bowls by Orville Redenbacher. Gets a Cynical 44 silver approval. Hope you guys enjoyed the movies. Enjoyed the snack. Alright, I will see you guys again tomorrow. And it will be Halloween. The very last of these. So, uh, enjoy. Take care. Bye.